was last in my class. Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe, your methods are sloppy, and your conclusions are highly questionable. Alright everybody, I am back. And I'm getting ready to start up Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup and continue my foray into the dungeon in my newbie guide with my buddy Buns, who is now a level 9 human berserker of Trog. Alright, so I'm going to click on him and just pick up where we were. Uh... Let me just ask the chat something really fast. All right. Um, hopefully the music isn't too loud. I always feel like I struggle to get that set correctly. All right, so I am auto exploring around as usual, looking for trouble, and I have uncovered a pair of gloves. A pair of gloves is a terrific find. Why is it a terrific find? Well, um, if you can see on my paper doll here, I have no cloak, no gloves, no boots, and no amulet. These are all the different slots that you can equip, and you want to fill those up as fast as possible. Um, and so if these are just seem to be a generic pair of gloves, which is fine. I'm going to equip them. And now I'm up to plus one from this pair of gloves. So, you know, helps me out a little bit. There's no consequence to wearing gloves unless they're cursed and, you know, do something diabolically bad to you. Uh, but these don't appear to. And so I'm going to definitely be using them. Now... Let me then also make a note here that this is a staircase, and if I hover over it, it says a staircase to the layer, all right? The layer, if I right-click it, it'll give me some information. It's a sub-branch of the dungeon. Um, most adventurers find the layer of beasts to be an exciting change of climate. And indeed, there is something to be said about getting gored, mauled, and eaten rather than sliced, burnt, or stabbed. The lair contains the entrance to one of the swamp or the shoals, one of the snake pit or spider's nest, and to the pits of slime. Okay, so let me explain some of what this kind of stuff means, alright? First of all, this is a sub-branch. And a sub-branch means it's not part of the main dungeon. If you look over here where it says place, it just says dungeon, all right? If I go down in here, it would be a layer, and there are separate layers that are that, uh, that levels to the layer. Within the layer, as I go through it, I'm going to find other branches of the dungeon, and these branches can contain um, runes, runes uh, of... Zot. And to beat this game, you need to collect at least three runes of Zot and then go grab the orb of Zot and get the hell out. Actually, the runes might not be runes of Zot. They might just be runes. Um, I can't remember the exact nomenclature. I'll look at it when I get one. Um, but anyway, you need three runes that you can acquire from any of the branches that have been generated for your particular run through. And so you could either get the swamp or the shoals, and there's a rune in either one, but you don't see both of these, okay? Um, you're either gonna get the snake pit or the spider's nest, and there's a rune in each one. And then the pits of slime is always there, and there's a rune there, all right? Some of these, like, I consider to be easier than others. Um, the Swamp and the Shoals are medium hard. They're kind of annoying for different reasons, but both have water that you can drown in. I hate the Shoals um, most of the time, unless I'm like a gargoyle or something that can fly and doesn't care. But they have all these shitty enemies in the Shoals that can like lure you out into the deep water. And so you don't want to mess with them at all. But for now, 
here is my advice to you. Until you get to the depths, um, which it, it used to be like, I used to go like, well, dungeon 10 or deeper. Um, until you get to about le dungeon level 10 um, or the depths itself, I don't advertise going into or I don't endorse exploring sub branches. Like, I don't have the ability to go in here and do well yet. I'm not geared up enough. The dungeon is generally easier. Now, the Orcish Mines, like the first level of that, aren't that bad, but usually I say, no thank you. Um, I'll come back and get that later. Um, you're going to need some things to deal with the layer, like poison resistance, for example. I'm not really good at that, and by not really good at that, it means I don't have any. Now, I do have a mace, so Hydras won't be as difficult, uh, but just take my word uh, for now that you don't want to mess with that until you have to. Now, you can mess with that um, if you just, you know, want to see and, you, and you're feeling really good, go for it, you know, but don't say I did not warn you, okay? Um... Okay, so we're actually doing all right. Like, these guys are okay. This is an eye of draining, by the way. Um, I think he drains your MP. Um, yeah, so he does this ability called Draining Gaze, which causes your magic to leak into the air. So for me, this guy's a joke. Like, I don't give a shit. Take my magic, dude. That ain't, that ain't a thing to me, all right? Um... And again, I'm kind of cruising just now because, ooh, ooh, okay, these are magical gloves. They're ruined gloves, right? And so they could have something good on them. I've reached level 10. Great. I'm going to get these babies, and I'm going to identify them, all right? So what do we got? Lost two pair. Oh, my God. Ooh. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Oh, um, I'm just gonna have to say that, uh, you know, a plus two pair of gloves of strength are tremendous. Strength is the number one stat that we need, and they're plus two, um, which is the most that gloves can get. So watch this. I'm going to change from my plus two, um, gloves of strength, and how much strength do they give me, you ask? Well, let's, let's see. Um, they give me three, okay? So I'm getting a huge three increase to my strength, which helps me with damage, armor, everything. And um, also getting more armor class to boot. So we are really, really in a good shape um, for this point in the dungeon. Now that doesn't mean that things are gonna continue along this trajectory, but the gear is starting to unfold for us. We did get a shield. Um, we're missing plate armor. I would really love a pair of that. We need some boots. We need a cloak. Um, we could use some good rings. Necklace, you know, amulet of some kind. Okay, that'd be good. Got a lot of food, too. Just cruising. Oh, here's a Null Sergeant, all right? Noel Sargent is kind of a jerk because he usually has other guys with him that he, like, pumps up. Um, but I think I killed his... the rest of his, uh, little brigade. So he doesn't have any buddies with him right now. I would point out that if you look at the description here, it says that the Noel Sargent hits you but does no damage. He's here, and I'm here, so how is he hitting me? Well, he has, um... a plus two spear of piercing okay so that's a hell of a good item and um i mean spear itself isn't that great but what's cool about pole arms is you can evoke them to attack one square further so he's like reaching out lunging out with his long spear and hitting me and i can't hit him with my um flail so i gotta step in and he gets a free attack on me while i do that but after that it's gonna be curtains for this guy now piercing um i'm just going to Right click on this to show you what this brand does. Um, it inflicts extra damage upon your enemy. So it's just like piercing just means it does a little extra, okay? And it can be evoked to extend its reach. 
So spears are fun for that reason. Ooh, it's a cursed ring of teleportation. Um, so it's a ring that occasionally exerts its power to teleport its wearer next to monsters. That is hilarious, right? Um, you could try to, like, maybe pretend like that would save you from some situation by slipping that on. But I'm going to say that um, you can't rely on it. And it's cursed, so you can't take it off. So, just avoid it, you know? Um, it's not worth it. Now, you saw there when I searched to go down, it suggested the lair because it was the closest staircase down, but I'm not interested in the lair. I'm going down again to level 9. Um, Alright, so these guys are called Whites, alright? And they're like glass cannons. They really don't have good armor, but they always have good weapons. And what's sweet about them is... Most of the time when you kill them, they'll drop whatever magical weapon that they have. So you can build up your arsenal by killing these guys. But the first thing you gotta do is actually, you know, kill them. So I'm gonna do that. Ooh, they they outmaneuvered me and flanked me, um, which blows. This guy had a plus two greatsword. Okay, so a greatsword, if you want to check the dungeon crawl, the DSCC Reddit. I have a whole thread going right now about... Why the hell would anyone want to use a two-handed weapon? Because I still haven't been ever convinced that they're superior to one-handed weapon and shield. A greatsword is really cool because look at its base damage. It's 15, all right? So it does a shitload of damage. So you might want to use this and go for it, all right? It can also be used to repost, which is kind of like um, the sword skill. Like each weapon type gets some kind of special thing that it does, like maces, um do blunt damage, so for example, they don't cause hydras to get more heads. Axes cleave everything around you, spears can be evoked, and swords can repost. Um, tridents can be, well, any polearm can be evoked. Anyway, so um, this is a plus two greatsword, so it's a really good weapon. I won't use it, but it's, for me, it's a pain in the ass if the enemy has it, all right? Um, and you can see, I just took half my life. This guy has a cursed plus five spear. So those are good items, but they're not for me. Um, you can see, looking at my skills, oh, I've been drained by something. Somebody drained me with something. When you get drained, your skills appear, as it says, in magenta, and it means that they are less than their normal. And so you kind of have to either, like, gained enough experience or pass enough time for that to wear off anyway you look they're not even showing my polearm skills are terrible and my sword skills are terrible they're not even really even displaying here because i'm not training them so it's bad now yeah you can see here i have the drain effect on me um and if you ever want like more information about yourself um you can um, click on the shift 5 to get the percent, and you get this kind of screen, um, which helps describe you somewhat. Now, um, there's also... Uh, let me see if any of this, like, helps you look at yourself um oh you can just click up here and open that screen as well so you don't have to actually push um oh okay and this is another thing too he um fading is saying that he doesn't think any monsters pick up equipment anymore it used to be that like if there was a good magical sword or weapon or something on the ground and you killed it like, the, and all enemies would just try to, like, get it and then use it against you. And then you would kill that guy, and then his buddy would jump in and pick up that awesome sword and use it against you as well. And it was a real pain in the ass. So sometimes what you want to do is pick up stuff like that so that the enemies couldn't get it. But it looks like they cleaned that up, and you don't have to worry about that. Now, I've gone up the steps, and the reason I went up the steps is I need to rest. But I haven't explored enough of that level, and so I want to rest upstairs in a safe area, all right? And you can see that um, when you rest, if you push 5 to rest, and you have food and you're hungry, then your character will just automatically consume that. He won't eat rations automatically, but like, 
um, perishable foods, he's going to take it. Now, here's a plus two War Axe. This is an interesting decision because a War Axe is really good. It's base damage 11, um, and it's plus two. Like, for example, uh, my Morningstar has higher base damage, but it's good base damage for an Axe. Um, but I'm not going Axes, so I'm leaving it behind. Ooh, we've got some Howler Monkeys, okay? So here I am just backing into my hallway, protecting myself as I rip through these guys and poison them. And there's a very annoying priest who's got a cursed minus three flail. Well, thank you for using that. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going after these guys. Ooh, ooh, cool. All right, I'm going to go berserk just so I win this fight automatically. Um, I don't really need to worry too much about it. Uh, I'm down to 18 hit points, um, but I'm just going to keep resting in this little corner. Safe enough. And I'm going to see if this guy has plate. He doesn't. What a bummer. That's why I was all excited, because it was an orcish warrior, and there was a chance that he had some plate. He didn't. He didn't. All right. Ooh, I'm corroded, even though um, I resist corrosion. That's something that's worth pointing out. Even if you have resist, it's never 100% resist. The corrosion wore off, okay? So lower level guys can corrode you. It used to be a complete pain in the ass. I think some corrosion used to just be permanent, like, and you would just have items that would get wrecked unless you could do something about it, and artifacts can't get corroded, so that was one of the other major benefits of them. Um, okay, so here's an artifact. It's our first um, artifact that we've found. When you see an artifact, um, it has a special name. It's not just like um, glowing or whatever, uh, or ruined or something. Transparent means that this is a white item. Well, at least it should be. Damn, maybe they... No, okay, yeah. When you go to look at it, you can see that the text is written in white, a transparent ringmail, which means that this is a randart or artifact piece of equipment. These are what you're looking for for all of your slots. They're generally the most powerful things in the game. Um, they have more magical properties than just a blue magical item. However, a lot of them could be shit. They could be cursed. They could have a bunch of minuses on them. And a lot of the times you will have to really make tough decisions. Like you'll have to wear something that gives you a detriment to get a benefit. So let's, I'm going to use identify scroll just for the purposes of this tutorial to show you guys what a artifact looks like. I normally wouldn't do this because I don't give a shit about ring mail. Um, I want heavier armor than that. But um, it's the plus one ring mail of the Gru. And within these curly brackets, it tells you all the properties. And all this has is resist poison. That's actually pretty good. I could see a scenario where I might actually need that um, because I need, you know, poison resist. Now, here's the deal. This is plus one. This is base armor five, all right? And my, ch my scale mail is base armor six, but it's plus four. So it's not a huge step down to wear that. So if I really, really have to have poison resistance, like I need to go into the snake pit, or I see a bunch of bees that are going to try to fight me or something like that, then, okay, maybe I would consider that. So I'm going to actually keep that on me. Ooh, look at this fun. Um, here's a bunch of enemies, and they're a bunch of hard enemies, okay? Um, for different reasons, but let me show you. Trolls are nightmares, all right? It says it looks dangerous. Um, they generally can go berserk, and they do ridiculous damage. It can bite for up to 20 and claw twice for 15 each. All right? They don't have that good of armor, um, they but they regenerate, and they can just output a lot of damage. Centaurs are really annoying because they can, they're can they good with bows, and then they can shoot you from a long way away. And then even if you get into melee with them, they will switch. Like you see, he just shot me. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's a centaur warrior. This must be um, like the entrance to the depths or something. They're guarding some kind of important place, all these difficult monsters. Centaur warrior is even worse than a centaur. But centaurs have huge strength, so they're not even fun to fight in melee. I'm just kind of backing out slowly um, to get to a point where I can fight these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Like this spot, I'm going to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't have to worry about the range damage right now because um, this 
Hippogriff is like blocking line of sight. Now here's what I'm gonna do to see if I can take this. I'm gonna just um, go ahead and go Berserk right now. I'm gonna kill this guy quickly and then see if I can kill the Centaur Warrior, which I figured I would be able to, and I did. I killed all these guys, all right? Now I'm gonna calm down and go out of Berserk. Um, and I could see that there weren't guys behind that, so that was a safe, like, instance to go Berserk. Remember, you never want to go Berserk if you feel like you're going to come out of Berserk with enemies around you, unless you have no other option, all right? Berserk is so good, so powerful, you just have to be smart with it. You can't overuse it, and you don't want to use it. Um, this guy is splashing me with acid. So I think my resist is, like, resist corrosion is coming in handy. Ooh, cool. So it was a, um, a shapeshifter or something. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm actually, this freezing wraith. These guys are hurting me. This guy's got a huge weapon. I'm gonna go berserk right now so that I don't go down to this dude. Because this guy could kill me. Yeah, he's got a giant mace. You know, some kind of absolute insanity. Um, and so that thing could have crushed me, so I need to get the hell out of here, and I need to go Berserk right now so I can kill him quickly and run. Now, my shields went up to 6, and I reached level 11. So, you know, these are hard enemies. I just turned level 10 only a few seconds ago, well, minutes ago. Um, so you can see how good these guys are for me to fight. I'm gonna back myself into this little corridor and just rest. I'm just gonna keep pushing 5 until I get all my hit points back. And all my debuffs are gone. Now I'm going to go back to the business of auto-exploring this level. Um, yeah, so here's his... Oh, uh, it's not a giant mace. It's a great mace. But look at this thing. Base damage 17. It just will smash you. You do not want to see enemies wielding that. Um, oh, okay. So they were just guarding this little, like, alcove with magical stuff. Um, there was a ring... Um, back there that I automatically picked up, I believe. Um, and there's a spell book of Unholy Summoning. There is a thick glowing staff, which is cool if you're a caster. And a glowing short sword, which is nice if you're a stabby, stealthy type of guy. I am not, so I leave that behind. However, I am interested in this ring. Now, I only have one Identify Scroll left. I don't really want to use it on this ring. I have six remove curse, so I'm just gonna do this instead. Um, and this is a ring of sea invisible. This is a really, really useful item to have. This will save your ass. There are these guys called like, I think they're called unseen horrors, and they are pains in the asses. They flick around, jumping around um, diagonally and, and through unpredictable squares around you very quickly, similar to like what a imp can do, but they can actually do good damage and they're invisible. So you can't see them. You can get into a situation where you can back them into a corner and then swing at the air, knowing where they are and still kill them, but it's really annoying. So being able to see invisible if you need to is great. Now I don't need to. So I'm gonna go back to wearing my ring of fire. I got another ring of fire. Um, and in case you're curious, um, I'm going to show you. I have um, two fire resistance because I have my scale mail and my ring. If I put this on, I actually go up to three fire resistance, top fire resistance. So it all stacks for um, fire cold and resist negative energy. Um, and magic resist too, I believe, for that matter. But I don't need it um, at the moment. Now, if I was going to, like, if some enemy came on the screen that was going to do an absurd amount of fire damage, I would put that on to mitigate it. So a lot of what you want to do with your backpack in this game, um, it's, it's so big. Oh, I'm going to drop these gloves. I don't need it. I'm going to shift click to just drop those babies. Don't need them. A lot of what you do with your backpack is just keep stuff on time, on, on hand for utility, because you're going to need utility. Um, some enemies are super hard if you don't have the right stuff to deal with them okay now i'm going to continue exploring that's a hound that's easy actually i'm gonna chop this guy up because i can eat some hound flesh and get my hunger satiated oh wand oh no oh no okay so this is a two-headed ogre all right this guy 
is a character killer, all right? Um, it's extremely dangerous. Here's the deal. He's super strong, so he's going to hit you hard as fuck. And he's using two two-handed weapons, all right? So he's got this, like... Um, his strength gives him 15 damage, and he has a Dire Flail, which has insane um, base damage, and then this giant club, which you can only even use if you're as large as an ogre. Um, luckily, it's cursed minus two, but you can still hit me for it, with it, all right? Um, so he could theoretically just like one-shot me or two-shot me, and that's really, really bad. So what I'm going to do is just push A, and push A to go berserk right now, all right? And I'm gonna start hitting this guy. And he's hitting me, but I've almost got him dead. There we go, he's dead. Um, my maces and flails went up to 12, and I'm gonna chop him up and back away and rest until um, my slow is gone and my berserk debuff is gone. Now, I will show you, because that just appeared. Look at me now, I have um, four levels of piety with Trog. If I push A, you can see all the things I can do. And now I've acquired this ability called Brothers in Arms, all right? And I'm going to um, push the question mark to describe this, okay? So this is a very, very good ability that summons huge angry allies to wreak havoc. So if you need some help in the situation, you can use this to summon some like demons and shit to come in and help you out. Now you can't control them completely so you know you can like i think you could shout and use commands that you would give for um summoned ability enemy like a uh, summoned allies and things like that to tell them to target this person or this thing or whatever but it doesn't reliably work all the time however these guys can come down and start killing things and then most importantly they can block like they can cock block an enemy and give you an escape route if you really need it sometimes. It's not 100%, but it's really good help if you need it. Now, I will point out that my, it costs a lot of hunger, all right, like most of Trog's abilities, but my failure rate is 45%, okay? You might be asking, like, why the hell is the failure rate so high? Well, let me show you. If I go to my skills, um, you'll see that, uh, invocations is poor and so i'm not going to be good at using god abilities without invocations let me see why is it not displaying um invocations for me um so let me look at this description your invocation skill affects the likelihood in an attempt to use divine abilities with certain gods will be successful well oh okay that's why I can't train it. It's because Trog, it pisses Trog off. Trog doesn't use invocations. So, um, I'm actually, like, embarrassingly not sure then what will make it easier to use that skill. What does Trog use then? Does he use evocations? No, that doesn't make sense. Maybe I just have to get higher piety um, to, to use that skill with better accuracy or like raise my level or something like that. Um, oh, there's a killer clown in there. Killer clowns are, um, it sounds funny, okay? Um, but they're actually enemies that you encounter like on the fifth floor of Zot's dungeon. They're really hard. Um, they're not too hard if you can make it that far, usually for me. But they, they will mess you up if you're not prepared. Um, thank God they're trapped behind there. Sometimes, like, you know, the game will do that. They'll just trap some really hard enemy back there just as a joke. It's got, like, a cruel, sick sense of humor. Now, um, in that battle, you might have seen... Um, what happened is... It just says there's no target in view. Because that guy went invisible. And then... I started, you can just, even if something goes invisible, instead of putting on my ring, which, you know, I could have done there, um, it, they would have got a free attack on me if I did that, but still, it was probably smarter to do that. 
but sometimes I just like will swing at the square I know the guy's on. So I had a guess he was still on his square. He just turned invisible. And so you, it's like you barely miss something. You don't even know. And then it's like something hits you but does no damage. And then you hit something. You're not sure what it is, but you got it. And then I really hit it and I killed it. And then Trog accept my kill and then it reactivated auto pickup. Um, the reason it does that is because um, when something goes invisible takes away auto pickup I think for this reason because when you pick something up it takes a round and so you don't want to be like trying to run away from this invisible bastard and then pick something up on accident and take time because that guy is going to hit you I think that's the reason but either way they turn it off then I kill them and it's like hey we're going to turn auto pickup back on and you get some more experience so that's when you know it's dead whenever it says received a little bit more experience something has died all right they keep exploring. Um, it's a shadow imp. That's not hard. I'm going to try to throw stuff at him. I'm going to miss because I suck at that. Uh, but he's dead. All right. And we're just going to keep looking around. Keep looking around. Looks like we're about done with this floor. Looks like we're about done with uh, Dungeon 9 here. Um, what is this? This is a rune door. Um... Sometimes, I'm not sure about this, but sometimes the game will put like these doors up and you have the option of opening them if you wish, but usually there's just something way difficult behind it. And so it's just kind of like an extreme risk that you can take if you want. Like if you feel like you're really, really strong and you want to do it, go for it. Um, again, I'm a coward. I like consistency um, and I like just having less volatility in my runs as much as possible um and so what that means is i avoid something like that it's not worth the risk reward isn't there for me personally um a lot of players will go in there they'll do that you know you might look at my inventory and think like hey you're way strong enough you could easily do that and i could but for me it's not worth um the investment i've put in at this point to go there all right, I'm going to go down to the next level. Now I'm on Dungeon 10, and things are going to start getting um, even harder at this point. Scroll of Immolation. Don't want that. Okay, hey. Here's an Orc Warrior. Let's see if this dude can oblige and drop me his armor. All right, I'm going to back up, back up, back up until I get to this situation. Um, I'm just gonna push S to wait a turn and then start hitting this guy. If he hits me hard, I will, um, go berserk, but I didn't need to. Damn, he still just had scale. Come on. Can somebody have some plate? Apparently not. Now, here I am. Ooh, okay. This, that was classic. That was a classic game moment there where it's like, uh, I was about to say something about how strong I was, and then the game's going to introduce something really difficult. So, what I was about to say is, like, at this point, I feel confident enough to um, liberally hold down tab and just charge in and auto attack people until they I destroy them. Um, just lean on the key because I know that I can beat stuff. And so I'm going to speed up the progress a little bit by doing that. But here I see some yaks. Now you might think a yak, that's a joke. Yaks are hilariously difficult in this game. They can gore you and hit you for damage you would never expect. Um, so he's dangerous, all right? And they also come in a pack. So because of that, you got to be careful with yaks, all right? Um, now I'm going to wait and I'm going to just start chopping these guys up. Luckily with what I've got, yaks are okay. I'm okay. Oh, here's a troll. This is no fun. All right. Let's see, Mr. Troll. How are we going to do? All right. Um, I'd say that's enough damage for me to take. I'm going berserk. Again, like I get around half hit points against something that can hit me so hard like a like a, a troll. That combat has turned into a point where I need to use my oh shit button. 
It might seem like overkill, but trust me, if you're in a situation where you can safely berserk, the only thing you're losing is food most of the time. And so do it. All right. Boomerangs. Boomerangs are sweet, let me just say, if you get your throwing skill up, because they'll come back to you if you're really good. And that's just fun for everybody. Oh, shit. All right. Let's talk about this. You fall into a shaft and drop one floor. So I'm on dungeon 10. Granted, I had almost mapped it, um, but I just never... A shaft is always bad. I mean, getting a shaft is bad, right? Um, you know, it's a bummer. And the reason it's a bummer is because you can't... You're not guaranteed to, like, fall down in a safe place. You might not even see a staircase and you might be surrounded by enemies. And so if you don't have um, a spell or a scroll or a potion or a wand that can escape you, you might be dead. All right, so here I drop. And what can I see? I see a white, an iguana, and a way down as well as a scroll of teleportation. I'm gonna head towards the iguana. Be oh, oh no! And there's an invisible guy. Okay, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna then take off my fire resist and put on the invisibility. And here he is, the unseen horror, like I was telling you about before. I'm gonna step here for a moment to get some protection, so I'm not facing three guys at once. I'm gonna just hit this vampire um, and see if I can take him by himself. All right. Now. This is a nightmare situation that I need to describe that you need to be aware of. Um, the white has his uh, like glaive or poleaxe or whatever in his hand and he's able to evoke it and hit me and attack through the enemy that's in a square like tanking for him. So I actually can't, so you might get into a situation where you have somebody who has some sick weapon with reach that's hitting you that you can't get to because there's an enemy in the way. So you really want to avoid these at all costs. Um, luckily, I'm strong enough to not really worry about it, but you, you might be surprised, like, where the hell all the extra damage come from? And then you're like, dear God. Jesus, what kind of shaft situation? <laughs> okay. Um, this run, even though... I mean, this is the game. This is the game for you. I thought I'd been doing really, really well this run. Things have been working out for me. I fell one shaft and was just kind of like casually looking for the floor up, about to pick up this teleport scroll. And now I've just fallen down three floors. So now I am in an area where the enemies are way probably more difficult than I want to see. And I don't know if I'm in a safe spot. So this could just very, very easily end my adventure. Let's see what happens. Okay. A lot of things to talk about here. So there's nothing on this screen, which is great. And you see that there is a staircase here. Now, it's an escape hatch, which means it's a one-way ticket up. But I'm going to take the one-way ticket up. Normally, I hate these things. But in this spot, I would much rather face the enemies one level up. The enemies will progress. I mean, it makes sense. They progressively get more and more difficult the deeper you get. So I'd much rather fight a level four 13 enemy um, than a level 14 dungeon enemy. Now, I go up, and the hatch slams shut, so I can't escape from this spot anymore, but I had already fallen down a shaft, so it's, you know, not, it's a lateral move. It's actually just a better move, because I'm going up. Now, you see here in the bottom left, it says that I hear a distant snort. What that means is that there is a labyrinth with a minotaur in it, I believe, and, um, that is like a temporary dungeon. The Labyrinth is a dungeon that's only open for a certain amount of time, and if you can get to it before it closes, you can go inside and try to get the treasure. Um, some of these temporary dungeons are better than others, okay? Um, oh, and it gives you some information. It says, Hark, there's a gateway to a gauntlet on this level. Find the entrance quickly before the gate is sealed. Oh, the maze is different now? It Does it conceal itself like its map ever-changing, or is it easier than that? 
Because basically, for me, I used to hate going into the maze because um, it changes its layout. So you would try to explore to get around and um, you would come back and then it would be different and it would take forever to get out. And generally, in my experience, the Minotaur might have one good item, but usually his treasure cache is... Um, underwhelming at least for me maybe they've increased it and made it easier so if they um to that effort then because this is a new playthrough for me on this level um i'm going to actually try to get into the timed dungeon area okay i'm i'm fighting an ugly thing which is actually a really hard enemy um not just because it's ugly all right let me um see he's extremely dangerous um and he uh does all this extra damage can gore you yikes i don't want to see this guy i want to kill him i killed him let me give you one tip if you're looking for a timed dungeon all right like a dungeon that's going to close in that case you actually don't want to do auto explore because auto explore takes a long time to get around um, and so I'm exploring manually right now. Um, but be on your toes when you do this. Because exploring manually, you could, like I said earlier. Oh, okay. So it's a gauntlet, like, and I get to pick who I fight. So it's it's not a minotaur maze. It's like a arena where I get to choose my opponent or something. That's fine. Ugh. Look at this disaster. Jesus Christ. Okay. This is worth mapping scroll. Yeah, I might have a mapping scroll. I just haven't identified it yet. Okay. So what's going on here is that I stepped into an area with a shitload of enemies that are very hard. All right. These centaurs are going to be raining on me with their difficult bows. Like we already covered, these two-headed ogres um, can devastate and so I'm actually going to use my scroll of blinking, all right? These are, scrolls of blinking are one of the last things that you ever want to use, in my opinion, because they're the best escaping mechanisms that you have depending on the situation. And in this situation, I want to get out of line of sight out of all these ranged guys. The ogres are slow. They're not going to catch up with me immediately. But I'm going to blink here, okay? Remember, you can only blink where you can see. And if I blink here... Um, at least for the time being, that centaur warrior won't be able to hit me. Now, um, centaurs move really quickly, you know, because they've got hooves and four legs and all that. So he's going to get back on me very quickly, but this gives me a breather to do two things. First, I'm going to push A, and I'm going to use my god ability called Trog's Hand. That will start me regenerating so that... At the very least, I will have a little bit more health when I see these guys again. And then I'm going to, even though this is a bit risky because there's a lot of this floor I haven't explored, I'm going to use my scroll, one of my scrolls of teleportation, okay? Um, and I'm doing that so that I get out of here. But I need some time still. And so I'm going to use a scroll of fog so that this dude can't see me. Okay, and then I teleport. And I teleport to this spot up here, which I don't have explored yet, but I'm going to um, look at my mini-map and see that there's a wall up here that ends. Um, oh no, that's just the fog of war. The brown line is fog of war. The gray line means the end. Anyway, these are yaks, which we talked about. They're quite difficult. Oh, and great. And another centaur warrior who's going to pick on me. Um, so I'm going to use my scroll of fog so he can't pick on me. Jesus. This is a very good lesson in shit going wrong. Um, I fell through two sh consecutive shafts, one for one floor and one for three floors, which sucks. Then I got, I was just kind of exploring around and got into a situation where I uncovered a bunch of really, really hard enemies. So I escaped it. They teleported me not into one of these areas with nice corridors that I could be safe in, but into a giant chamber where I am not safe. 
with yet another centaur warrior who is using ranged attacks and some yaks, which are hard. So I'm going to run up here. I'm going to run up here. I'm also very hungry, uh, which sucks because um, I could get into a spot where I might not be able to go berserk, um, which is like my final mechanism for getting rid of getting out of this spot i'm going to step up here and pray that there's a little bit of a chamber for me um all right i guess this is a good spot to talk about some positioning issues this is a decent corridor in the sense that on this side of me my my right um, it's actually my left, but, it, you know, it's it's right of my character as I look at the screen. Whatever. Um, only one guy can get to me at a time. However, on my other side, these two squares will afford an enemy to hit me. So I can get hit by three guys at a time. Uh, which is bad. Enemies will usually figure that out and will try to, like, path around and screw you. So my, my option here, um, I could stand here and fight, let the yak come into this square, and then provide cover from the centaur warrior, which is fine. This orc has a reach weapon, he has a trident, but orcs suck a ball bag, so I'm not really worried about them at all. But this orc wizard over here is going to have free reign to cast spells on me, and then another yak or something could come around the other side. Because the smoke is up and the yak is blocking, I'm going to actually step here and start stepping away. You see this guy casting fire on me um, and use these guys as cover from the orc or I'm sorry, the centaur warriors like bow. So I can't get hit by that. And then back myself into either one of these slots. Now, these are very, very nice slots to get into. Unfortunately, um, because I fell through a shaft and things are kind of going badly, I don't know what's up here. So I could very well be facing some other shithead difficult enemies up here, but it's worth it. Um, because I need to get into a spot where I'm only hit by one enemy at a time. Okay, and so the dickhead centaur warrior got his licks in when he could. All right. And he was able to pound me, but now he can't anymore. Um, that's why I backed up that extra square. I'm actually going to um, move up one square, I think, so that nobody... I can't have enemies come around and flank me um, here and here, but so many of these enemies suck. Really, the primary threat for me with this build in this situation was the Centaur Warrior shooting at me. So now, let's talk about getting out of this spot. Um, I know I have three potions of curing, which can help me. I'm regenerating a little bit, which is helpful. Um, I can go berserk if I need to. But let's see. Okay. Oh, Jesus. And a freak came into view. This is like... Yeah, okay. I'm using everything I can. Um, I'm going to use brothers, uh, brothers in Arms, I believe. However, if I use Brothers in Arms, it's going to make me so hungry that I can't go berserk. But the only thing attacking me right now is this yak. Um... And so, because of that, I'm going to just do something incredibly crazy, very ill-advised, unless you're in an oh shit situation like this. I'm going to eat this bread. Um, and now I am... Okay. I'm regenerating a little bit. My health is going up, as you can see. My um, ogre that I summoned with Brothers in Arms is up here, and he is... Like I said, he's shielding a square. So, like, that's the one of the best things that these guys do for you is they provide a block 
they run interference. So now at least only this orc can get to me. And orcs suck. I don't care. I actually want this guy to just stand here and hit me because he sucks so bad. And he prevents a stronger enemy from taking his spot. My my ogre went berserk and it's going to beat the shit out of that guy. Um, now a yak has moved into place, which I don't want. I'm going to step in um, to the centaur warrior so he can't shoot his bow at me. I might have to go berserk here, but I, I don't know yet. If that's necessary i think my ogre can do a good enough job killing yeah my ogre is beating the shit out of this yak all right i've been able to kill the centaur warrior and now it's just a yak i'm gonna swing at him swing at him wow that was very lucky my ogre stepped in to block the afrit oh shit it's afrit's like doing ranged fire damage well never mind i thought that was cool but it's not cool um I'm going to go Berserk to kill the Afrit because he's just a complete pain in the ass. Luckily for me, um, I do have a bunch of fire resist. Okay, I leveled up to 12. And we're going for strength. And I got two stats. At level 12, I got strength and agility. Great. All right. Um, kill this guy. He's dead. And um, I'm red. The only guys still Berserk. I mean, the only guys I see are these two orcs. Um, and so I can try to get to them, but my Berserk's gonna start wearing off. It just wore off, but luckily, the only enemies left are shitheads. So, um, there's a scroll, there's a scimitar of flaming, which is fine, I don't really need it. And my ogre is almost done helping me out. Jesus, another guy came in over here, all right. I'm going to back into this corner, and immediately what I have to do is rest. It says here at the bottom in the text in yellow, um, you hear the thunderous beating of a very distant drum. That means that the gauntlet thing that I kind of wanted to find is about to leave, but it's more important to survive than to just recklessly go out and try to find that. I'm slow, can't berserk, and um, am at like one-third health. So, don't care. I have to rest until I get full hit points. Um, sorry. Yeah, I know. The beating of the drum. Okay, so it says after a thunderous strike, the drum beat cease, which means that dungeon branch closed. And that's like, you know, I mean, it's a bummer. Even though that's a bummer, as they say, to lose that dungeon branch, it's a lot better to not have died there. Um, and so, I'm going to take my life and be glad that I'm still around. I mean, remember, I'm um, three, still three floors deeper than I'm comfortable with. I don't want to be this deep at all. I'm actually looking for a staircase up. Actually, let me see if I found one. It's way over here, okay? Remember, you can always shift X to search and then um, use shift and the period key to go for the right carrot to go up and you can cycle through. This one is what the game is reporting is the closest one to me. Now, it does take me through this whole area of nightmares, but I think I killed most of that stuff. Um... So, maybe I just keep going. I'm going to go ahead and use my scroll of enchant weapon at this point on my flail. I know it's probably a waste. I, I really love sandbagging those things, but um, I'm just in a really, really tough spot here. And so, when you get into a tough spot, you kind of have to make suboptimal choices like that. Oh, hey, actually, yeah, I'll fight you. Come on over, dude. You have plate? You don't. Man really just keeping plate from me. Okay, here's a suboptimal choice for you. I always go berserk until I'm, I have like a large shield or something. Okay. I took both of those guys out going berserk. Again, 
I'm trying to explain as much as I can and give you as much advice um, as a new player as I can. But so much of this game comes from experience and reps. You're going to die a lot over and over. But those reps will make you stronger. And what happens is you get to this point where like it goes beyond the numbers and you just have a feel for what you, you're capable of um, given the gear, given the level, given the enemy type. Um, and what else has happened with your stats and everything, you just will get a sense of what you're capable of taking or not, and you get a feel. So I had a feel for the fact that if I went Berserk right there, I would take both of those guys, and it would be a very low-risk situation for me, and so I did it. Alright. I'm kind of like, I want to clear these guys out for no reason, because I'm... I, well, not for no reason. I think that they might be guarding something decent. Um, so I'm going to just try to fight them. Come over here, dude. Jesus. All right. I got to go around the corner so I can fight these guys one at a time. Look at that. That's called Surrounded. That's called Berserk. Okay. Luckily, most of those guys are shitty at this point. Like, they weren't Centaur Warriors or Two-Headed Ogres. They were the, you know, vastly inferior versions. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Okay. So, let's talk about this. Um, there was an ogre mage there, and before... Oh, sorry. No, I didn't find a gauntlet. I, I got swarmed, and I had to fight a bunch of enemies and then rest, so I didn't have enough time to get into the gauntlet before it closed. I had to teleport out. It was actually really dire for a second. This is actually semi-dire, and it need, leads me to explain the situation. Before that mage died, he summoned, like, a six-headed hydra, and an acid dragon, a bogger, and a skeletal warrior. This little purple circle in the upper left indicates that this is a summoned enemy, okay? This monster has been summoned, and is thus only temporary. Killing it yields no experience, nutrition, or items, and it is incapable of using stairs. So what that means is... I don't want to fight these guys, and I don't have to fight these guys. Yeah. But if I just wait enough, um, these guys should go away. They're not going away. Oh, the Bogart is the summoner. Dupes. That's a doofus move. I thought the Bogart was summoned, and the Ogre Mage summoned those guys. Okay. So, I'm getting hit. So I'm going to blink out of this. I'm going to use my blink to go up here. Um, and I'm going to run away. Ah! I'm very low. Alright, I'm going to teleport. Okay. That is a situation where teleporting saved my life. I'm going to immediately start resting to get my hit points back. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, Boggarts are complete assholes. Summoning stuff is can be just a game ender. Alright, so I need to go up. Oh, I was stupidly searching for a staircase down because that's what I'm so used to. No, I still haven't uncovered a staircase up yet. I mean, what kind of... Look at this! Another artifact ring mail. They are just... Um... Yeah, that was tough. I've, I've had to use... Um, you weren't watching, I don't think, but... I've fallen four floors at this point, so everything is a little bit harder than I want it to be, so my stockpile of, um, yeah, exactly, uh, Javelin, or I can Wand him, you know, like, I've got a Wand of Disintegration or a Wand of Acid to blast him with, um, but the difficulty here is that I can't find a staircase up. And I've had to use, dig really, really deep into my stockpile of items, which is just a shame. Let me look at my... Oh, I have a plus two helmet, so this shitty regular helmet can't be good. Yeah, it is a really deep fall. Oh, here we go, sweet. A staircase up. So I've... I, I came up one. Now I'm up two. Uh-oh. This is something that every dungeon crawl player needs to be aware of. These are slime creatures. Right now, they are not bad, but they merge 
Um, no, I haven't ID'd the uh, mapping scroll yet, so I guess I could just use scrolls and see what you know what develops. These guys can merge into bigger slimes, and they get to a point where um, they become something that can kill even one of the highest level characters you know in the game. Like they're they're that hard. Ah. All right, near starving sucks when eat this. And um, I'm going to take a step back. They will... Oh, Jesus Christ. Water elemental? What kind of disaster? This is just getting stupid. I got to get out of here. All right. Oh, my God. This is a comedy of errors here. Okay, so we've got an electric eel. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, fog, teleport. Oh no, he engulfed me in water, so I can't use a scroll. Okay, now I can. Duh! Oh, this is getting worse and worse. Look where I teleported. All right, I gotta immediately read teleport again. Why can't I do anything? What, they they all got attacks on me before I could do anything? That doesn't seem appropriate. All right, Jesus Christ. Um... What do I do here? Teleport and just try not to be dead. No, I'm dead. I got five hit points. Um, I'll drink a potion. Drink another potion. I'm just trying to teleport at this point. That's where I teleported? All right. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Just ridiculous. At least it was by a staircase. All right, so I, I, yeah. Now, the difficult thing about this situation is that I only have one scroll of teleport left. So I'm gonna have to start like really pulling out all the stops. I do have an unexplored up staircase I can use to try to get to a less congested area of the floor above and try to find another up staircase. I'm going to start using scrolls. It's a scroll of enchant armor. Fucking fantastic. All right. So we're going to, um, if you're playing shield, okay, what you have to do is you have to enchant your shield with enchant armor. It's the first thing you want to enchant because it gives you a flat. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I should have. I wasted a, um, I think Fading's point here is correct. I wasted a bunch of stuff that I didn't need to, um, by just, like, trying to go ahead and explore that. Um, but I made it. And that's Dungeon Crawl. You have a bunch of safe things. Like, I had to use potions just to kill time for my teleport to kick in. Um, but it worked. Now, um, I'm gonna need some bigger heal potions, that's for sure. Anyway, my point is, you wanna use enchant armor on shields because if you use it on armor um it just gives you a plus to the roll that you get with armor like if you have plus five then your die gets one side bigger which does give you a more potential to block more damage but if you are getting your shield up that is giving you a bigger percentage chance to block all incoming damage so it's always the right move to enchant your shield out um, I'm going to enchant my shield all the way out. I want a large shield better, but, um, you know, this shield is fine for now. And you see now my shield skill is 15, which is great um, for this point. I'm going to use this. It's a scroll of random uselessness. Get the hell out of my inventory. I'm almost to the point of chugging some potions. I actually, okay, here's something I do. I need to find heal wounds as a potion because that's going to be one of the things that helps me escape um 
Yeah, it's like it's it's your chance to block, and if you block, you block all damage. So you want to do that as much as you can. Now, people um, in the Reddit were telling me that like higher level enemies ignore shields, and yeah, that might be true, but you need to survive long enough to even get to those dudes. Um, and also, in my experience, I mean, like, I have a plus two, I have plus two gloves, and I have plus two helmet. That's as much as you can enchant those. And I don't want to put any more into this scale mail, because I want plate. Now, here's what I do in this spot. I use a scroll on any potions that I have more than one of, because generally, there's more healing potions, um than other types of potions. Uh, so if you get a big stack, it's probably a common type of potion. So I'm gonna pray that like these yellow potions, um, two potions of Berserk Rage. Okay, well that sucks. That's unfortunate, don't need that ever. Um, and I'm gonna use my other scroll of identify here on these bubbling emerald potions these are potions of flight which aren't useless but i wasn't looking for that um, i still don't want to drink a potion for no reason at this point that is not um on my radar at all because uh i could get like a mutation that fucks me up or somewhat like a degeneration or some other shit potion poison potion that i don't want to deal with and i'm at full health at the moment with some staircases to use so let's use these staircases. Um, remember, the asterisk means I haven't done it. And so I'm gonna use this staircase and see where the hell it takes me. All right, so it takes me up and I see these mosquitoes. Um, mosquitoes are bitches because they evade. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back down the steps. That will pull some of the enemies with me depending on how many open tiles there are by the staircase and they will get free hits on me when I go back down the steps, um, and actually when I came up the steps, but I just have to take that in order to get better position. So you see three mosquitoes tried to follow me down the stairs, but there were only two free squares. So this mosquito got um, deposited over here where he's doing jack shit to me because he doesn't have a ranged attack. And so now I'm only fighting two mosquitoes and nothing else can add into this fight. Whereas before, I would have been getting hit by three mosquitoes and I had more open sides to get hit by other enemies. So I don't want to fucking do that. So I'm going to fight. Which mosquito do I want to kill first? It's the one on the top. Um, okay. If I kill the one on the bottom, then this guy's going to take his place and I still have two mosquitoes hitting me, which sucks. But if I kill the guy on the top, then I'm still only getting hit by one mosquito. And I can eliminate one guy from hitting me. So I'm going to swing at this guy up top until he's dead. He's dead. And I'm going to kill this guy. He's dead. And kill his buddy. He's dead. All right. Rest until I'm full and go up and get shot by this shithead centaur. Um, oh, no. Okay, he, he didn't get a shot at me. So I'm going to bring this guy down um, and break him and go up. Now... I hate to do this because it's unexplored, but I am going to just go up and minimize the amount of shots that this guy gets on me. This zombie toad is no problem. Chop this up. And try to find a staircase up. Did we ever see one? No, not yet. And you get this honey. There's an orc coming at me. That's fine. Please do. There's a shitty crimson imp coming at me. Whatever. Um, that's a staircase down, which I don't care for. All right, let's get out. Okay, here's a slime man and this water elemental. So I'm going to take this water elemental one-on-one. -on -one. A slime one-on-one -on -one is fine. These slimes are going to merge, which blows. Um, I'll go berserk to take it and heal myself up. Rest, 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 rest. All right, well, whatever. It's just a ogre, so that's fine. That's not a problem. Chop him up and eat him. Boof! Fuck. That is a Cyclops. He doesn't see me yet, but he throws boulders, um, which hit real hard. So I'm going to step back 
and I'm gonna rest on my staircase. And now I'm gonna try to fight the Cyclops in a more favorable situation. Yeah, that piece of shit electric heal. Um, oh, I'm still wearing my... Ooh, cool. Okay, I'm still wearing my ring of sea invisible. I'm actually probably gonna turn that off um, and put on a ring of fire resistance. Um, I think that's more useful, but anyway. Trog just granted me a weapon. Let's see if it's a good weapon. Fuck, it's not. Um, it's a flail, okay? That's what I'm already using. Um, I don't want a flail, really, because its base damage is only 10, and I really want something like a Morningstar that's a, he a bigger hitter. Um, and he, they, he, Trog generally likes to give you anti-magic stuff like this. Let's, let me explain anti-magic. Um, and so, it reduces the magical energy of the wielder, which I have shit. I think it chops you in half and disrupts the spells and magical abilities of those hit. Um, okay, so it's very, very good if you're fighting a caster and you want to just, like, do heavy damage. Um, but right now, it is plus four. I'm going to keep it. But, you know, I'm not I'm not over the moon about that. It's fine. It It's better than nothing. Now I'm just kind of luring enemies out one at a time. So that I can get myself into favorable spots. Like fighting these centaurs one at a time is fine. Chop them all up. Rest. Jesus. No, see, here's a staircase up. Thank God. All right, we're going up in a second. I'm going to get this scroll of fog and I'm going to kill this. Jesus Christ, that was not worth it. All right, go up, go up, go up. Okay. This is fine. Berserk. This is not fine. The Orcish Mines must be available on this floor. Okay. Gonna have to use um, my last scroll of teleport. Okay. And hey, look at that. A staircase up. Finally. Yeah, I agree with you, um, baiting about that, like, you know, what are you gonna do? Once if once you get into melee range on a caster, switching weapons wastes a turn, gives him an extra chance to pop some shitty spell at you, and my other flail hits him just hard enough. So, it's probably not a good idea to use that. Additionally, let me say, um, the problem with the flail, uh, sw switching the flail is, um, it's not stronger than my plus six. I do wonder if it, if it does more damage versus like summoned things or something like that, but you generally don't want to fight those anyway. They give no experience. Now, finally, I found a staircase up, okay? And it's going to take me up to level 10, which I have almost mapped out. Um, so I'm going to go up and rest and just rest and rest and just luxuriate in the fact that I finally fucking made it back to level 10. I fell four levels. It took me all of my blink scrolls, all of my teleport scrolls, um, all of my curing scrolls, my... Uh, I used all my identify scrolls. I did find another one, thankfully. Um, but s mostly all of my fog scrolls to make it back here. But I made it, damn it. Um, now I'm going to use identify on these emerald potions. Two potions of haste. Those are good. Um, potions of haste are really, really nice, so that's fine. I'm happy to find that. Okay, so I'm getting a better grip on my potions anyway. Um, and I'm going to explore this level, okay? Yeah. Yeah, that does hurt, but, you know. Most men run away screaming! I had to run away screaming, but I made it. You know what I mean? It's just like, at least we're ready to go. And let's get sweaty. I'm ready to get sweaty and continue getting some experience. Hopefully we can find some better armor. I still need what? A cloak, boots, and an amulet? Jesus, I'm missing a lot of slots. Okay, so we're done exploring here. Um, so I found the layer, okay. Um, Hmm. 
Okay. Um. What other areas have I found? I think... I'm trying to, like, basically decide what's my next plan, okay? I'm on level 10 here. I've cleared it. Is it safer for me to go to level 11, or do I want to go to the lair? I think level 11 is fine, and so I'm going to go to level 11. I'll go down this staircase that I've never explored, um, and wait, 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 and go up. Your The barbs in your skin will harm you if you move. Yeah, that's fine. I have to have them harm me. I can't... Um, I'm just gonna go berserk because there's nobody else around and then clear these fuckers out. All right, I'm gonna rest, okay? This staircase sucks. Um, I'm gonna try to find a staircase that is more protected when you go down. This is not, but at least there's not enemies immediately around me. All right, um, okay. So I found two enemies. I'm just gonna walk them back to the staircase, okay? I'll fight this ice beast by himself. And I got to level 13, so I got some more hit points. And I'm going to pull this iguana up. Again, it might seem tedious to, like, pull enemies up, but I'm tanky enough to where I can do that, um, and I think it's worth it. Troll hide armor. Okay. Please have some plate. Yes. <laughs> Alright, I finally got my plate mail. Now, you might be saying, but you have plus four scale that's fire resistance, and I do. Alright? Let's look at the difference. This is base armor rating 10, okay? Um, and it will give me 14 armor class, okay? Um, this will give me eight because it's base armor six. My armor skill is to the point where the only thing I'm really losing from the scale mail is the fire resistance. But what I gain is that base. So watch this, I'm gonna take this off and I put this on, okay? And you see that my armor class goes to 21, even though this is plus zero, okay? But more importantly than the fact that my armor class went to 21 is the fact that um, my base armor went up four, which remember, base armor is a flat reduction in the incoming damage, it's physical damage. So that's gonna help me a lot. Now, at this point, my armor skill is good, but if you look at plate, it says, um, plate can, um, no, it doesn't actually give me an information about, uh, how to solve for pi with the encumbrance rating. Um, but anyway, it's still going to mess me up because my skill is only 10. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point, because my maces and flails is almost 15, I'm going to push b again and just go back to training it normally so i'm going to pump a little bit more xp into armor and shields because now i'm going to want to raise my raise my armor up um so that i don't lose attacks and i'll show you what that looks like go around and auto explore see if i can get a demonstration of losing attacks all right here's a dude who just needs to die Oh, right now, it's not happening. Okay, here's... Oh, Jesus. Okay, here we go. Here would be the example in text. And they show you this, at least, which is nice. Your shield and plate armor prevent you from hitting the orc priest. So because I am, like, encumbered with this big heavy shield and this big heavy armor, um, I lose my attack. And that sucks, but my shield... That's why you want to raise shield and armor, to just prevent that from happening. Again, it, it happened. And you might think, well, that's stupid. I don't want that to happen. And I can understand that, but the benefit I get from wearing plate far outweighs those extra attacks. Here's another set of plate. Now it's just raining plate. Now that I got my first one. Ooh, ooh, shit. Okay, yeah, the orcish mines are definitely here, because here's a 
much stronger orc dude. It's an orc knight. This guy can like rally the troops and pump up the dudes around him. So I got to take this guy down quickly. Um, I might have to go berserk. If he hits me again, I'm going to go berserk. He didn't hit me again. And he's just wearing chainmail. <laughs> Modest. All right. All right. Oh, plus zero gold dragon scales. This is scales of gold. Base armor 12. Yes! Can I wear this? Do I have to, like, use a thing on it? Oh, no, I can just straight wear this shit. Fuck yeah! Woo! Dragon scales, 12 face armor. This is, like... Arguably the best armor you can get in the game. Crystal Plate is stronger. I think it's 14 base armor. But this has resist to everything on it. Um, so, uh, look. It gives resist fire, resist cold, and resist poison. All in one go. Not to mention my armor class is now 24. Um, sweet. Sweet. Okay, you used to have to, like... Yeah, that is amazing. That's, like, easily, um, you know, the best uh, pickup that I could have gotten there. Um, and let me explain. Um, look at this. It, I'm going to right-click on it again just to show. Okay, so... It's super encumbering. It's going to make me lose attacks all over the place. Um, but base armor 12, again. That means 12 flat off the top. It can be enchanted to freaking plus 12. So I can make this insanely good. And then it gives you... Yeah. Resist fire, resist cold, and resist poison, and it's just flat better than plate mail. That is... I'm going to drop this ring mail. I'm never going to use that. going to drop this for now. going to drop this. going to drop this. That is Shangri-La. That, like, you know, I was almost to the point where I had died in this game. Like, I got down to five hit points at one point. Um, so, people are not going to actually really hurt me for a while. And now I can much more easily do the layer because I have resist poison. Um, yeah, that was tremendous. Okay, let me just finish mapping this floor. Alright, there's a lot of guys here. Let me look at the mini-map, see if there's a safer place to fight these guys. It's right here. All right, yeah, this guy's smiting me. It's the only thing that's challenging me at this point. Now, one thing you don't want to do, okay, um, when this game gives you lemons, I mean, no, wait, reverse that. When this game gives you lemonade, you don't want to waste it, okay? And how would I waste it? It would be by dying in this spot. After I just got, um, yeah, exactly. I didn't have resist poison. And so it's just like, now I'm poison resist, man. Now I am surrounded here, but again, these guys suck. I'm also slow, but let's see if these guys can actually hit me for damage. My money is no. Yeah, look. The orc hits but does no damage. You block the orc's attack. The orc hits but does no damage. The orc hits but does no damage. You block the orc's attack. I am so far above these guys in terms of my tanking ability that it's like a joke. I don't have to worry about them. Well, what do you mean you're hu too hungry to rest? Eat. Why are you not eating? That's weird. It didn't let me just push the eat button. I should have just automatically eaten right there. Anyway, okay, whatever. Yeah, this dude had a dire flail of holy wrath. That's why he was hitting me for more. Yeah, I was starved. 
I need some beef jerky. Okay. Mow those dudes down. Chop them up. Ugly thing. Ooh, Hydra. Shit. Okay. Let's go back to my little corridor. This level is open, but even on open levels, you'll find a little safe haven. You know, like a corridor like this. And I'm just going to plow through these guys because, you know, Hydra don't like mace. And, um... Ooh, Armor Emporium. Look at this. Okay, so this is my first shop that I found in the game, which is amazing, all right? Um, what the frack? They don't display your gold on the main screen anymore? All right, I have 689 gold anyway. Um, I haven't found a shop yet, so this is my first one. And what do you do with the shop? Well... You see what they got? This is an armor shop. Remember, I need um, cloak, boots, right? And an amulet. So there's a very good chance that there might be something in here for me. Um, there's these artifact gloves. Oh, hit hit cash. Yeah, to see your cash. Resist elect. Strength minus two, int plus three, dex plus four. These are good for another person, but not for me. Um, I never want that. Man, what are the chances that he doesn't have... He's got all these sweet gloves, but he's got no cloak and no boots. Oh, well. I already have um, plus two gloves of strength, hilariously. So, I'm done with this guy. But anyway, shops are amazing when you can find them. And um, you can always just go back to them and buy stuff if you need to save up or whatever. Okay. So now I'm done exploring this level. This is um, a good stopping point for me um, before I go down to level 12 and try to finish it. I can go back to the levels that were almost about to kill me and just visit them as grand champion of the universe, which is what I'm going to do with my new stats, my new levels, my new gear. My um, night was complete by getting these gold dragon scales and I can't wait to slap on as many enchantments um, as I can. Um, I think before I turn it off, I'm gonna use these just before I forget. Okay, these are two potions of mutations. My buddy Fading loves to use these things. Um, I do not. I don't want to take any risks, especially now that I've got gold dragon scales. Um, I'm gonna use this on these, and these are potions of degeneration. Get the hell out of my inventory. So I haven't hit the, uh, scroll, or the slot machine yet with my potions to find healing potions but um, I'm still in a good spot okay so everybody I will check you all tomorrow evening um, I'm gonna post these up to YouTube please hit me on YouTube uh, subscribe to the channel ask me any questions check out the videos I'm doing on might and magic and uh, dungeon crawl suggest any new content if you want Please follow me um, on Twitter uh, and follow me on Twitch if you haven't um, already. And uh, yes, sir. Good night to you. Yeah, this is good progress. I mean, you know, look at this. We're 13th level here on our uh, newbie guide. So we're doing pretty good. We might actually get a room, you know, with a human. Not too shabby. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Good night.